Okay, everyone. I am making this video to make sure we all in the same page in order to continue our next class and also go to the next topic when there's friction, how to deal with these examples and also to help you finish the current homework. Okay, so everything started with, we discussed about the energy, energy stored in the objects. First thing we came across, when there's an object moving, when it has a speed or a velocity V, how much energy is stored? We talked about the kinetic energy stored about stored in that object. This object could be moving on a flat surface. It has a mass M and initial velocity, let's say 15 meters per second along this way. It's keep moving. This is T equals zero second just before starting the motion. After 10 seconds, let's say it was accelerating. It has a speed along this direction, still trying to move forward. It has a 25 meters per second. We could talk about this situation right here. Kinetic energy initial one half mass times the speed 15 meters per square sec 15 meters per second square of that. We could talk about this situation. Kinetic energy final equals one half. How much is the mass? 10 kilograms, 20, whatever the number, times the speed squared, 20 squared, 25 meters per second squared. The energy in joules, capital J, joules. This could be a situation the object is moving in a flat surface. We could talk about how much energy is stored, kinetic energy stored initially. After the motion is done, slowing down could be speeding up, speeding up could be how much energy stored finally. So all we need, one half mass V square. Also, we could have situations like these. Many, many situations. We could have a situation, you are trying to project an object similar to what you have seen earlier. You have a box or a ball M with V equals 10 meters per second. You could talk about the kinetic energy as well. Kinetic energy equals one half mass 10 squared, not only linear motion. We can talk about the projectiles as well. Whenever you have an object with V equals 15 meters per second, with an angle 10 degrees. If you are trying to make that projectile motion, you could talk about kinetic energy right here. All you need, one half. How much is the mass? M. You need the speed squared, not the X component, not the Y component. How much is the speed? 15 squared. Whenever the object is right here, how much is the speed? Maximum height y component equals zero, but it has a x component, vx. If you are talking about the kinetic energy right here at the maximum height of this parabolic motion, kinetic energy max height, you are talking about one half mass vx squared. And again, you can talk about any location right here, how much is the kinetic energy? So still valid for the projectile motions. And also you will see examples, objects are moving on flat surfaces and they are going to go on, on the inclines. It's moving on a flat surface. Now it is going in a incline. This could go again, downhill as well. Nothing wrong with that. The object is moving right here. We are focusing on start. 
at the bottom of the ramp, bottom, max, the maximum position. We are looking at the events to talk about the kinetic energy later on, potential energy. When it reaches again, the bottom of the ramp on this ramp right here, and again, it's going to go down here. Any point, whenever you need, all you talk about kinetic energy, one half mass V squared. Okay, so that's one type of energy. Then we talked about the potential energy. Whenever there's an object, we talked about potential energy. First, gravitational potential energy. We always talk about the ground level. Height zero level or y equals zero level up here. Y is positive, down here Y is negative. That's what we talked about. At this level, if you have an object right here, mass M, using this formula, this guy has potential energy, PE, or U gravitational, that's equal to a zero. That's equal to zero. Potential energy, zero. U gravitational equals to a zero because it is at the height zero level. If you have an object, let's say, if you have an object right here, height H, positive H, this has, this level has compared to the zero level, always compared to the zero level, gravitational potential energy M times G times H. H is positive, positive energy stored in the object. If you were moving this same object down below here, by down here, this location has the height negative H or negative H1. Now this is releasing energy compared to the zero level, compared to H equals zero level, down going below negative energy, less energy. This level has U gravitational, that's equal to M times G times negative H1. This is equal to negative MG H1, releasing energy compared to this zero level. Okay, so getting back to this example right here, we can also talk about the potential energy and also the kinetic energy. So we already talked about kinetic energy stuff. If we had the velocity V1, V2, V3, V4, we can talk about the kinetic energy one half mv squared. Also, we can talk about the height levels and the potential energy. This is the ground level. I am extending this line. This is H equals zero level and potential gravitational zero level. This guy has location start, gravitational potential energy equals to zero. It's at the height zero level. Right here at the bottom of the ramp, potential energy gravitational, this is equal to zero level. Let's call it, it is height H1 above the zero level positive. This location has potential energy gravitational one half. I'm really sorry, guys. Not one half. M times G times H1. Done. And let's say it is below the level H2 but again below negative. So this guy right here down below the ramp, it has gravitational potential energy mg negative h2. In other words, negative mg h2. So all we do talk about the events events starting bottom of the ramp of the first one, high point of the ramp, and again here. And still at this level, if the object is right here, they are at the same level right here, negative mg 
H3, even though it looks like a flat surface right here, it is still below the zero level by a height H2 negative direction. Okay, this is negative H3. Okay, so those will be the situations when we have objects going uphill, downhill situations. That's gravitational potential energy. And also we had the other one when we had these springs involving. Whenever we have a spring, okay, right here, it is connected to a wall or something. This is the mass. This is the equilibrium. X, the compression or the stretch equal to zero level. But whenever we stretch this guy by positive X stretching, this guy has the energy stored, energy spring stored one half K. How much is the string stretched? Square of that one half Kx squared right here. If we were to compress this guy, now we are compressing from this zero level, we are compressing this guy by a length x1, but now it is negative. Now we are also storing energy, spring energy stored one half k x1 negative squared, negative number squared, still this negative sign is going to become positive, one half k x1 squared. No matter stretching or compressing, we are storing energy inside these springs. Now, we could have situations like these, not always flat surfaces. We could have situations, we have a wall, we have a ramp somewhere here. The spring is attached to here on the wall. This could be situations, spring, natural length right here, equilibrium could be compressing, could be stretching. We will talk about these type of examples. You will see some examples in the homework as well. And also could be on a ramp right here. The spring is going to go down here along the ramp, stretching down here. It's totally fine, same scenario, same situations, same ideas involving. With the kinetic energy, with the spring potential energy, with the gravitational potential energy, the final topic we discuss is the conservation of the mechanical energy. Whenever we talk about mechanical energy, remember everyone, we talked about kinetic energy, the idea we already talked about. Potential energy, this has two types, springs and also gravitational. One half kx squared spring mgh, this guy one half mv squared. That's the whole topic or the whole equation you are talking about. If we don't have friction in our problems, in other words, if, Only the conservative forces do the work. We can talk about no friction involving examples. Total mechanical energy is conserved, constant, before and after. Whenever he, we have a situation, a block or a box is rolling down the hill. This is initial events. This is final down below at the bottom. We can talk about this guy is from the height equal zero level, this guy is height H. Starting from the rest, V equals zero, no springs involved, initial energy, mechanical energy, E mechanical initial, no kinetic energy, this one checked, it's no spring is involved, only gravitational potential energy, MGH. That's the total energy stored in this situation. When it is reaching the ground level, let's say it has a speed V1, E mechanical final, 
that's equal to one half m g one half m v one square kinetic energy ground zero level no potential energy no spring potential energy done so that's the total energy stored in this object when it reaches the ground level all it happens this is the down below this is the beginning or the uphill energy the total potential energy stored is converting into kinetic energy rolling down the hill could be rolling uphill kinetic energy down below v1 is going to convert into when it reaches the maximum height v0 by a height h1 all the kinetic energy is going to transfer into potential energy we are talking about the events start and ending we are not worried about whatever happened in between okay so similar to that we could have these type of examples one of the homework problems you have over there, whenever there's a pendulum that's doing this swinging motion, still it could ask, it has a 